So we're moving back to strategy again, and I want to talk now about strategy as reporting. It continues on from the, the previous post on the topic where we explored what happens when our strategic plans become not much more than reporting frameworks. But exactly what do I mean when I say strategy as, as a reporting framework? Well, when a strategic plan contains little more than a wish list of goals and objectives, it's, it's not really a strategy. As we discussed in the very first post, Napoleon's strategy at Austerlitz was a specific set of actions that met his challenges. It was not a simple wish to win the battle. Sure, some people will say, but the details are provided later in the operational plans. The question is, who develops these plans? What's their focus? How do they relate to one another? And here there are lots of problems. Strategies like that usually identify measures, performance indicators and targets. In many cases, units and functions lower in the institution have these measures and targets delegated to them. The task of actually coming up with a strategy now becomes the responsibility of these units and functions, as we saw in the cartoons in the last post on the topic. So what, what do these units and functions do? Well, basically, often they come up with anything they can do that will meet their targets. And they do this without any consideration of whether these activities are really helping the institution move forward, and often in the absence of any knowledge of what is happening in the other units and functions. As a result, there is inconsistency, duplication, inco incoherence and irrelevance. Most importantly, there's no consideration at any level about the real challenges that there may be in addressing the problem. The units and functions whose responsibility it's become now to deliver the targets of the plan probably have a pretty good idea why the institution has problems in meeting its goals. These are matters that are very likely entirely out of their hands. They have no way to address them. However, they're still obliged to meet their targets somehow. They'll probably fail because the real strategic issue has not been addressed. It's been ignored. The strategy does not mention or address it. And because they fail, they'll be criticised. And that leads, of course, to great demoralisation and further institutional weakness. It's not the fault of the units and functions that they fail to achieve their targets. It's a fault of leadership for failing to address institutional challenges properly in its strategic plan. In the next post on this topic, we'll consider a specific example of what's been discussed here in order to illustrate the ideas more clearly. But that's enough for now.